Good morning, everybody. It is a Monday morning. It's the 26th of April. Tomorrow is Freedom Day. But um, if you just come out of the weekend and you're confused, don't worry. It's not just you. It's, it's, it's a Monday, but it doesn't feel like one. And then by the time the rest of your week kicks off, you're going to be like, what? What the hell's happening here? Anyway, all of us are wearing jackets and jerseys and winter clothes because I'm sorry to be the one to announce this, but summer is officially done. Summer, Ooh. summer's done. Even autumn's probably done. There are leaves everywhere. My whole garden is just a big pile of leaves right now. I don't know about you. Mm. Yesterday was a, a really, in Joburg at least, was a really sunny, lovely day. It was actually hot at some points. Um, I, I was outside yesterday, but I'm afraid the morning and the evening is where I judge this whole expedition. Mm. And mor mornings and evenings are tough as nails at the moment. So, And it's going to get a lot harder through May, June, July. Obviously, Ooh. August is just hell, and then September it starts getting nice again. But really, we don't have much to complain about in, in South Africa because mostly it's very pleasant. Mostly it's fine. Mostly it's okay. So we're not going to sit here and moan all day. Anyway, how's everybody? How was the weekend? Mm, it was. It was. It was good. Um, I um, had a farewelling or a memorial service for the family member that I lost um, during oh. the beginning of COVID. Um, mm. <clears throat> so he was my uncle, my mum's brother, right, and um, a very well known musician, um, a drummer, and had taught many of the young drummers that we know from our music today. Um, yeah. um, and, uh, yeah, I was part of very many bands and drummed for many, um, you know, famous South African artists as we know them. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, so... I think what was really interesting for me is that he was very creative. He was also um, a, a carpenter and very oh, wow. good good with his hands. Um, and uh, just the other day, we cleared out or started to work towards clearing out his workshop and, and music studio. And uh -huh. we uncovered a set of drums that he had made himself and, um, you know, he had his his own really amazing set of drums and uh, another practice kit, and this was a third one that he was working on. Um, and he'd mentioned to us that he was building a drum kit. I mean, to 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 those yeah. of us who don't understand um, about building drum kits, it was like, oh, okay, cool. Um, and when I brought yeah. in a specialist with me and we uncovered this kit, <clears throat> he, he stood back and he was just absolutely amazed. So my uncle constructed this out of um, plumbing piping, um, galvanized piping, yeah, huh? um, and built this entire stand out of this galvanized piping. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, sure. He, he even finished it off in the quirkiness of using plumbing with two two working taps. Um, so. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> So it was really something amazing to see, and I never really appreciated it until a professional stood back and said, he, he was actually speechless for a while, um, mm -hmm. and he said, this is something that any drum collector worldwide would love to have in their collection. This is something that belongs in a museum. Um, sure. And it, wow. it was it was just so interesting to know that my uncle had been quietly constructing this by himself, um, he faced some difficult times towards the end, um, and uh, it was it wasn't a death related to COVID. Um, it was for for other reasons, which are pretty personal. Um, but mm -hmm. uh, yes, six months later, we because of COVID, we're finally able to get together as a family um, and go to a specific spot at Emerentia Dam at a specific yeah. time of year. And this is why I mentioned that the weather was so amazing, was because mm -hmm. the trees at that time are just yellow and red and golden yeah. and beautiful. Beautiful. Um, along the dam's edge. And we have two former family members there, my gran and my aunt, who's uh, my uncle's sister. 
Um, so we scattered his ashes there yesterday. I read a lovely poem and um, yeah, it was, it's, it's amazing how it's all part of the experience and part of letting go to have that finality, and laying down to. some flowers and, and saying yeah. something. No, if you, if, yeah. you, if you don't say if you don't say goodbye properly, it just feels like you you've left unfinished business, and it, you know for some people it just never really closes up the the hole. It's just yeah, you have to you have to say goodbye. Yeah, I mean otherwise it feels like the person's gone on holiday and they're still coming back. Right. And so you have to have this formal this formal goodbye. Um, but it was it was a pleasant day and. Um, we were able to send recordings to his son and daughter who are in Dubai and Cape Town, and mm -hmm. uh, it was just it was just really special. So that's that's what I did this weekend. Spent some family time. All right. Um, and, and, yeah, it was good. It was good. Yeah, I I actually went out on Saturday night, and um, there, I was I was at this suddenly at this party with like two hundred people. It was wild. I guess I felt <laughs> we were we were. We were no, well, what? I mean, you, you're not used to you're not used to seeing a lot of people, right? I mean, you know, maybe you've you've been around maximum twenty, thirty people at any given time during COVID, and then suddenly you're like, oh wow, it's back to pre-COVID times. People just having a party, no masks anywhere in sight, normal, normal, normal. Yeah. And um, I don't think there's anyone there who was worried or or con concerned about COVID. It just it was just a party. It was fantastic. And I felt like, oh, okay, things are slowly starting to creep back to normality. Anyway, uh, you know, with curfew, it all wraps up by like half past 10. So you, you kind of get back home reasonably early. I do. There's a part of me that really likes that. I mean, I still don't understand yeah. why we've got this curfew going anymore. But there's a part of me yeah. that likes the fact that, that you can use that as an excuse to be in bed nice and early. You know, nothing, nothing wrong with climbing into bed at like, you know, quarter to 12 and you're like, wow, mm. I had, and I managed to go out and, you know, see people and do fun things. Anyway. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Andre says he watched, speaking of COVID, he watched contagion, the movie, and now he's just become very motivated to stock up with supplements in preparation for a third wave. <laughs> well, Andre, okay. don't, don't, don't stress. It's not going to happen. I mean, there's a you massive, massive. You did it Sorry. to yourself, Andre. It's your fault. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't have watched that movie. What a lot of shit. Um, there was a massive protest in London over the weekend. I don't know if you saw that, but thousands what and about? thousands of people. No, it was an anti-lockdown protest. Now they're, they're sort of saying, just open up the country. This is stupid. Let's get on with it. Let's get back to normal. Um, and thousands of people on the streets in, in the center of London and in Hyde Park just kind of showing the government they don't care anymore. And then, you know, you get all the panic people who are like, oh, my God, this is going to lead to trouble, the, the, the 29th wave. And those people will be, you know, in, in 10, 20 years' time, they'll still be fearful and, and, and cowering in a corner somewhere. And you've got to eventually just get on with it because the only way to defeat these things, as we have learned historically from every other time a plague has bothered humanity, that the way to get over it is for us to, to just carry on living. You know, you, it doesn't force you to stop living. Otherwise, what's the point of being alive? Just to be organically alive and not actually enjoy your life. So I saw that happening. And and the, they had the Oscars last night. Did anyone watch that? So oh, it's God. still ongoing, actually. The, the, okay, the, right. The results are coming in. But what I found interesting was um, I was prompted to vote on the Webby Awards, which I'm sure you've heard oh, yeah? of before, which yes. is um, – Oh, it's everything from – it's absolutely amazing internet content, everything that's on the internet, from videos to adverts to um, podcasts to documentaries, um, short videos, long videos, memes, mu music videos, all sorts of things. And I yeah. found that so much more interesting than the Oscars. I mean, there there are long movies within the Web, the Webby Awards, um, so you can actually go on to Webby Awards. Um, I think it's vote.webby awards and uh, vote okay. for your favorites. Um, and do you remember I spoke about a specific comedian on YouTube that I watch? Um, Julia Nolks or Julie Nolks. And no. she does a special, she does a special um, 
uh, skit where it's her against her and it's her future self explaining COVID <laughs> to her past <laughs> self, uh -uh, warning okay. her past self about what's going to happen. <laughs> Are you sure you told us about this? Um, I did mention it very briefly because I remember okay. someone um, who was listening to us mentioned that they did they heard about it too um, and had seen okay. it. So she's up. She's up. Man. She's up for an award. Um, so I just feel like, and you know, you have a part in it. You're able to go and vote for whichever podcast yeah. or documentary you like. It's so much more interesting than the Oscars. What I'm surprised by, the, well, I'm surprised because it's still happening, but has clearly lost its impact. Uh, the the Razzies, the gold, the Golden Raspberry Awards. You know, they celebrate the worst films. No, and yeah. the right, 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 right. It's like the it's like the um, like the opposite of the Oscars. But I mean, even the Oscars yeah. have lost their they've lost their their sting completely. I mean, I don't think anyone would be bothered to watch a stupid live streamed Oscars. And I also think that the Oscars have started to, you know, ever since they became like this place where people just stand up and mouth off about politics. I think most people watch movies to escape from the world, not to be a part of it, not to be an activist. And these days, well, everyone in Hollywood has these, these, they make these speeches about things and nobody cares. What I'm glad the Oscars have done is they had a no Zoom and very specific dress code policy. So oh, yeah? that, as a viewer, I'm so done. I say this as we broadcast from home. <laughs> but as a viewer, I'm not enjoying seeing people at home. I'm not enjoying people seeing people on Zoom. I'm not enjoying feeling like, you know, exactly what you were alluding to. I want to escape from what I'm going through. So I want to watch a set. I want to see light. I want to see great choreography and 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 effort so i didn't want yeah. to see that oh, okay robert Dean, you want you want to show you want to show yeah. Yeah. yeah so at least they're they're back on set i don't know where exactly they were filming but it looked good so far from what i saw yeah they were yeah. practicing <clears throat> social distancing they had to have two COVID tests before the actual event um Whoa. so yeah the, it was quite well practiced but i think for me, it you know when COVID came about and we so many more people were able to broadcast from home. Remember the, the phase that we went through and we're still going through, where home broadcasters or podcasters or um, you know vloggers are mm. the stars now, and Hollywood stars have lost their sparkle. And uh, for yeah, me, think, this was highlighted. Right. Again again, by my interest more in the Webby Awards than the Oscars. No, no, I think you, you make a very valid point. There's a lot that has changed, and I don't think a lot of it is, is going to go back to where it was before. Some of it obviously will. And I agree with Sia. People are, like, desperate for a show now. Um, and oh. they, want to, you know, they want to see live entertainment again. But um, I'm just going to skip through quickly to something Sven just sent us. Listen, listen now. I'm super stoked. I became a father on Friday. We have a healthy oh, little bundle hey. of joy. You know, very proud father, he says. Have a great day, guys. So isn't that nice oh, for Sven? That's Congratulations. Amazing. Yeah. What a, what a happy how, thing to wake up to this morning. I wonder how protocol is and procedure is now in hospitals, Sven. Were you able to go into the ward? Were you able to stay there all throughout labor, before the delivery, all of these things? So apparently now you, you can stay it during labor. Um, but you can only visit very seldom after that. Mm. Um, so it gives it gives dads a lot of time to go and celebrate with family <laughs> and not feel obligated yeah. to be at the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen, I mean, I, I think um, I think there are lots of people who would would feel very lonely and very um, isolated if they weren't allowed to have, you know, for example, you. Every there are whole movies, there are whole categories of movies about, you know, the family sitting in the waiting room waiting for the the nurse or the doctor or whoever it is to come out and say it's a boy or it's a girl. Remember all that? That that's mm -hmm. like a thing. And to not be able to be there, I was there for the I was there for the birth of one of my nephews. And it was really special. You know, we were all kind of waiting in the in the adjacent room or whatever it is. 
and then they came through and told us and then we could all go through and and say hi when he was born and it was very cool i i feel that maybe that's one of the cruelest things about what's been going on is it so many moms oh i can't remember i think i I don't even know if i was in town or whatever but um but anyway maybe by then Maybe by then the, the the shine had worn off, and I was yeah. like, I've oh, been, oh, been here and done yeah. this before. As a petty person, <laughs> I would want to know why. And, and as the youngest well. child, yeah. Is, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. You're going to have to get your yeah. story straight when you have to answer to that. Sia's already hurt. <clears throat> so Sven yeah. says, yes, we did book a family room and stayed the whole weekend, was there for the whole birth. Oh, nice. So, very good news. Yeah, very I mean, nice, it even Sven. reminds me. Reminds me of um, that clip we saw recently of an elephant giving birth and how the family mm. ran over afterwards and trumpeted and celebrated. It's natural right. for us to want to do that and be together. Absolutely. Apparently, according to Venetia, the o- octopus teacher won an Oscar. Oh, That's I'm so good. glad. Nice. All right. Very good. Uh, Tracy's just adding to our discussion of the hospitals and their rules. So each hospital has their own rules, depends on the area, infection rates, etc. Visitors are limited. However, some of the new moms are delighted because mother-in-laws can't visit. I'm a birth <laughs> photographer. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's okay, quite nice. That's an interesting for, job. I mean, when families go home, new families, they often have a barrage of family members knocking down the door to come and spend time with them. And this is a good yeah. excuse for them to say, guys, we just want to social distance and take it easy for now. Yeah. Hmm. Well, let me just quickly give you an idea of what's coming up a little bit later this morning because we've got two full hours of lots of really cool stuff to talk about. Among other things, at 6.40, we'll be talking to JJ Cornish and our African analysis segment where we talk about um, all the things that are going on on the continent. But we also occasionally, we, we zoom in on a particular country and we find out all about what that country is and where they come from and what their history is. By the end of one of these African analysis segments, you will know all about that place and today we're going to take a look at Somaliland which is a very uh, misunderstood and much maligned and not particularly pleasant part of our continent but we're going to find out all about it from JJ. That's at about 6.40 and then uh, later on we're doing uh, the Collectomania. Um, You know we, we started this last week where basically we talk about all the collections that people have and this morning I managed to persuade my brother to talk about his collections because he's got some pretty uh, cool stuff. Oh, nice. I thought yeah, of some so other collections I have as well, so I'll add mm-hmm. to that. Cool. Okay. We'll get to that. So first things first, um, you remember Sia told us about the psychic that he got a message from last week. Do you remember this? Oh, yes. Yeah. I mentioned it yeah. on Friday. That's right. And Sia was blown away by how this person managed to just read it was it was a friend's family member, right? And you got this message that, you know, Sia Bonga X Y and Z, and and you couldn't believe that it was so accurate, and you actually went searching for more. So what happened? Yeah, well, it's kind of like needing or going for a second opinion with a doctor. Yeah, because sure. I've never gone to a psychic before. I've never really believed that much in them. So I thought, if you're going to mention very specific things, I might as well go yeah. for a second opinion. So I booked a session on Friday. Then now, once again, damn it, I hate the fact that I'm a believer. <laughs> I do. Uh-oh. I'm in there now. Maybe so now you hook, you hook, line, and sink it. What happened? Give me two more weeks, and I'm going to buy some gems and stones to hang about my, <laughs> my house here. But it's... It, <sighs> It's this. She started off the session by mentioning three people who I know who've passed away, and very specifically and so clearly, almost then for my benefit to clarify and to believe what she's talking about. And she mentioned the detail, a very close family friend. She mentioned my grandfather and she mentioned my aunt. Now, these are people, by the family friend, perhaps. I've never Mm. posted about my grandfather or my aunt. I don't know where you'd find that information. So the fact that she knows it, I was already now caught into tears. Like, oh, damn it. Okay, is this real? Okay, now I do believe in this. And her name was Brenda, the, the psychic. And 
she she has this very sweet and loving voice and nature about her but there was mm-hmm. a space and 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 time in the reading when her voice dropped a couple of decibels and then she spoke <laughs> that freaked oh me out she goes, wait Jesus. i now need to summon the spirits the spirits of the world the spirits oh. of the world are they are speaking to me and i'm like Lord, i don't know what, what is this what is happening but she split this she split the reading up into work um mm-hmm. developments in my life uh love life and just general health and family stuff what mm. i even what i made mention of and wrote a note about was she said something will happen with us in july in terms of work i don't know what that is but she said it will be a good thing so i thought okay thanks brenda things are looking up she says all right well that's good news so make oh. note of that and right. then she are you started... are you just are you leaving out some of the bad stuff she said about work like <laughs> Someone's gonna someone's gonna trip on their way to the uh, to the, the the laptop in the morning and they're gonna fall on their face. So she didn't tell you anything no, like that. None of that. No, she okay. just said that good. something good in terms of us will happen in July. Then she All says, right. she you know she was in the middle of the whole reading. Then she takes a very deep and dramatic pause and she says, "Hmm, you aren't in a relationship, right?" And I go, "Well." Brenda, wow, this is getting very personal very quickly. She mm. says, yeah, because I'm not seeing one person. I'm seeing a lot of men around you. Ah. Oh, Jesus. Okay, sure, yeah. I mean, wow. <laughs> is Brenda wow. calling war? <laughs> no, but hold on. I have a question quickly. Do you remember yeah. that woman that we had on on, on this show? And I she, just, she, I sort of she's... made fun of her. I wasn't taking her seriously. No, but she said... See something about getting married or a girl or a woman. So now this psychic, did you did oh. you did she know that you were gay before she said she, she sees had, a lot of men around you? Yeah, she she asked me first. She says, I'm I'm getting a sense of that energy. And I thought, is it my voice? Is it my demeanor? It was something misleading? Or really, now that I believe in it, I know, I'm like, okay, she's talking about it and she knows. So she spoke about that. Jesus. And, yeah, I spoke about you know there'll be no marriage for me on the cards, and I knew that. And it's just mm-hmm. weird for someone to be so specific. So, yeah, see, so yeah, so yeah, this is well, you know that, I mean, I'm a believer now. There's a there's a fair amount of this that is it like a self fulfilling prophecy? Like you hear it, yeah. and so you end up doing it. You know, I'm very I'm nervous about this stuff because. I don't want to judge it out of hand and I don't want to throw it out and say it was this absolute bullshit and don't believe a word and blah, blah, blah. But there's another part of me that's like, you know what? Some of these people are really good at selling you a story that's, yeah, 50% likely. And then because you believe it, you actually make it happen. Like I do believe human beings can manifest all kinds of things. You know, we're very... If, if, you, if you say something and if you believe something and if you repeat it and you you start to take it very seriously mm. ultimately you can you can really make that thing happen and well, because yeah. i don't know so she much of what these people like say is, is just it feels to me like um they really just a lot of the time they're also telling you what you want to hear or what you what's obvious but you don't like to acknowledge yeah there's nothing i'd say that really sh- was so left field for me that she mentioned um, but she was all, also a, a very interesting person to talk to and get to know more about. I didn't even know we had this in South Africa, but she also works with the police, the SAPS, for some murder scenes, for huh? you know various crime scenes to walk in and she feels the scene out and she sometimes gives details about what happened in there and you know lends to cases. So I thought, oh, okay. That's interesting. Some of them, some of them are definitely better than others. Um, yeah, that woman we had on last time was she was really bad. She was just totally out of. Uh, she she didn't have any you know any kind of feel for us or I don't think she really you know and and also we've got to remember we talk about ourselves on the show all the time. There's a huge amount of information about us out there as compared to normal anybody else who's 
you know, if you just scour their Facebook or whatever, you'll yeah. be able to find like out a, more about them. Like a consumer broadcaster on, on CNN. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's there's a huge amount of information. Like every morning, we talk about what's going on in our lives, and we talk about what news stories we're interested in. And so, mm. if you listen to just you know four or five episodes of the show, you'd get a pretty good feel for what kind of people we are, more than you might from someone who you really didn't know at all. And so, even for and uh, the very cynical part of me goes, "Oh well, come on, how hard is it to find out information about us?" because we're doing these shows every day. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I can't explain it. I'm hooked. So, <laughs> yeah, she did say that, look, I don't have to come back soon. There's nothing. No, she said the people who have died from my, from my life are dead mm -hmm. and are fine with that. They're at peace wherever they are. And they want us to carry on living our lives. So it's not like they want to make contact with us. They're not going to be sending some hmm. big, great sign, which I'm happy with. I think I've mentioned on the show here, yeah. it might be a little weird prayer of mine whenever someone close to me dies. But I'm like, don't visit me in a dream. Don't yeah. think you know, I don't, don't want, want to be, I, mm -hmm. I don't want to partake in that. So I'm glad the people who've crossed over are not just dead and they're keeping to themselves. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, uh, you know, again, I've, the cynical part of me, the rational part of me is like, this is total bullshit and you can't buy any of it. But uh, there's, there's always something there that you can't explain. There's a lot that we don't know. And I'm the first to admit that I don't, I don't even know a quarter of what's going on. Sometimes I'm so surprised by, you know, the sheer synchronicity of something. And I go, how is it possible that I was just thinking about that person and they just phoned me? out of the blue or how is it possible that 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 these three things that i've been thinking about for the last you know year and a half all suddenly within the space of 24 hours have just come to fruition or something's happened it's very it's very hard to explain there's no way you can come up with a, a short succinct explanation of that, that that is totally scientific or rational some of it we just don't understand Anyway, so we've got some other stories from people here. Do you remember John Edwards? Mm. Yes. Yeah, John Edwards. So Corona's Boring says, I think John Edwards is the most is the biggest douche in the universe. Someone in the audience has lost someone close to them whose name starts with a J. He disgusts me. Is he still in business, <laughs> that John Edwards? Um, I haven't seen like his show on any of the networks. No, oh, me neither. Hmm. No, that I don't, I I don't know that he's I don't know that he's still around. But there we go. All right, we're going to get to some headlines. We're going to do that in a second. And by the way, if you want, if you want to get hold of, what's that? I say he must have made his money, even if he isn't around. He was massive. Okay. He was all over the place. Mm. He'd come to the country often. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mm. know. Oh, he used to, and he'd charge a lot of money, and you, you know, you could be in the audience, and then he'd tell you a story. But I don't know those people. They kind of strike me like those snake oil salesmen of, of the 1800s who'd come rolling into town with their wagon and they'd have a bunch of cheap parlor tricks that they could play on people. And then people go, oh, my God, you know, this magic man has just been to town and he's helped me. There's still people who make money that way. They sell you stories. They sell you stuff that you that you want to be true. Like, no, I'm sitting here and as a fairly rational person, I'm going, Ooh, July, something good is going to happen. See, I told us yeah. something good is going to happen on the show. We're going to be ready for July. It's so exciting. I know, I know. Because you know, she said oh, of anything, though, I should anticipate a slight sign three days after the re reading, which was yesterday, of yeah. doors slamming or light flickering. <laughs> And so oh, I was walking around. I was like, "Where are you, Granny? <laughs> Coco, I not know the, this might not, be you." Not the doors slamming and the lights flickering. I mean, that never happens. Oh, you know, way. lights I, flickering. I, I, God's I, sake! I hate the fact that I'm in it. See, you're so deep in it. There's no escaping now. All right. I can't. Um, where should we begin? Let's take a look at some of the news headlines. Uh, what have I got here for you? All right. Uh, we'll start off with huh, the ANC Youth League picketing. Uh, this is actually it's such a stupid story. I don't even know if I should bother. 
Um, let's just start with um, the, the COVID-19 vaccine rollout, which is resuming on Wednesday for Johnson & Johnson. Remember they said they were going to put a pause on that because they were worried about, I don't know, yeah. five people in the whole in the whole world who suddenly were having you know, side effects and that because of that they weren't sure. So they decided, oh, no, no we're going to have to um, re reissue the Johnson & Johnson vaccine and now it's going to continue. The rollout was halted early this month over fears of a blood clotting disorder. Government has ordered 31 million doses of the vaccine. The Sisonke vaccine program, which sees healthcare workers inoculated, is also resuming. Vaccination sites will be expanded to 95 sites across the country. That's um, amazing. Amazing. Think about that. 31 million doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. That's just uh, unbelievable. I don't think South Africa yeah. Ever been it? We never. Why couldn't we ever do this <clears throat> back in the Tabo Mbeki era for AIDS? Remember, he always said HIV and AIDS weren't related. It would be too expensive for us to be able to get all the um, the antiretrovirals that we needed. He wasn't sure that they worked. Why couldn't we have done this then? You know how many hundreds of thousands of people died? Hundreds of thousands, not just the fifty three thousand who died from COVID. Mm. I think I think about that often, and it bothers me that our government was so callous. <coughs> do you think? Do, do you think perhaps um, there wasn't this worldwide motivation to to do the same? Whereas, you know, as South Africa, we've been able to work on existing models from other countries and how their rollouts have have you know gone along. But with Maybe. HIV AIDS, we we didn't have anything to go on. It was too no, big you, a concept. You might be right. I, I just find the whole thing very upsetting because. You know, those people in my in my mind, they, they, they died for no good reason. And, and they could have been saved. Hundreds of thousands of South Africans who could have been saved if we just pressed the button earlier. And I mean, now there are there are millions of South Africans on ARVs. Millions. And we get to do that properly. But it just it bugs me that those opportunities were there to save people and we never took them. So I mentioned this briefly. Uh, my octopus teacher has taken home the Oscar, um, and it's a huge privilege to represent the place I love, according to the director. So an intimate story of a man finding solace in the ocean and befriending a curious sea creature. Their unique bond grew in the icy waters of the Atlantic Ocean in False Bay, South Africa. When Craig Foster decided to capture the story in a documentary, he didn't know that it would, months later, take home the Oscar for Best Documentary, no less, at the 93rd Academy Awards in Los Angeles. So there I'm we so go. I'm so pleased about us. that. No. Well, there's people who've been you know, saying you've got to see the uh, my, my Octopus Teacher. Now, it's it's been worthwhile. You were backing the right horse, everybody. Mm. I still haven't seen the movie, no. though. So. Yeah, I, you I, really I have to be I... in the right mood. <laughs> you have to be in well, the right I... mood. You have to be... You have to not be expecting this um, crazy plot or, you know, wanting to sit down and watch something about the apocalypse or you have to really be in a um, a quiet mood, not looking for crazy entertainment. It's just okay. really subtle and, and <clears throat> special. Well, we, we still had a lot of South African representation at the Oscars this year. I was living vicariously through Nomza Mumbata, who's now based in LA and looking at her Insta stories over the weekend. You know, the Oscars goodie bag is still a thing and it's a <laughs> massive thing. Really? She, she was posting some of the things that she was getting and thanking the people there. Like getting diamonds? <laughs> Bro, I just and it wasn't even just a tiny little diamond pendant of a necklace. It was a whole string of diamonds as a necklace. She got an all expenses paid to three different islands. I forgot where they were. What? I think like the Caribbean is one of them. <laughs> wow. What? That's what they give away at the Oscars. At the Oscar goodie bag, the Oscar's goodie bag. It is, it is crazy to think you about. You know, that. it's always it's it struck me as so bizarre that like, you know, the the Oscars is the kind of thing that most of these A listers have to go to just keep their careers up uh, and, and and to be seen, right? And the Oscars mm -hmm. is a fairly prestigious award to get anyway. Now they also have to give the only people in the world who can afford diamonds and island holidays. They have to give them those for free. <laughs> 
and and, and these are the people and these are the people who stand up on stage every year and tell us how you know we must be this and we must do that and we must stop flying in private jets or in, in airplanes and we must uh, we must all be very conscious of our pollution our carbon footprint and stop eating meat and all this they tell you what to do the whole time and these are the people if you don't mind who are getting free holidays and you know strings of diamonds ah delightful i'm just not, i'm not i'm just not interested in hearing from those people anymore anyway so my octopus teacher the winner and then you remember we mentioned that story last week about that missing submarine in indonesia Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, they they found it, and um, mm. all fifty three of the crew are dead. Um, a missing Indonesian submarine had been found cracked apart on the sea floor in waters off Bali, and all fifty three crew are dead. You know, parts of the KRI Nanggala four hundred two. It was broken into three pieces. Mm. That is very strange. Authorities said that they received signals from the location more than eight hundred meters deep early Sunday morning and that they'd used an underwater submarine rescue vehicle supplied by Singapore to get visual confirmation. Um, mm -hmm. Apparently, they discovered some parts from the, the vessel on Sunday, including an anchor and safety suits worn by crew members. On Saturday, the Navy had said that fragments of the submarine, including items from inside the vessel, had been retrieved, but its location had yet to be confirmed. So... They were doing live torpedo training exercises off the island of Bali, and uh, it disappeared on Wednesday and had been missing for all of that time until they eventually discovered it on Sunday. Oof. That's mm. going to be one of the worst things that could happen is to be in a submarine when it cracks open. My God. Mm. Anyway, Zimbabwe has uh, – they don't have submarines in Zimbabwe because they don't have a coast, but they do have <laughs> helicopters – and uh, there was a helicopter crash. The Zimbabwean Air Force helicopter crashed, um, and a child and three crew were killed. This oh. is pretty awful. Uh, the accident took place on Friday in the village of Arcturus, which is around 30 kilometers east of Harare. Um, apparently, uh, what, what happened was the helicopter crashed into a house and sadly claimed the lives of two pilots and a technician, as well as a child who was on the ground. So... That's oh, got to be a terrible way to go to. Imagine you're in your house and you're a, you're a kid and you're chilling, maybe watching TV, you're playing with your toys or whatever it is, and then suddenly this helicopter comes smashing through the roof and takes you out. The child's mother um, yeah. and another girl were taken to hospital with burn injuries. Contact with the helicopter was lost after it took off from Zimbabwe's main airbase in Harare. Search and rescue teams sent to locate the aircraft eventually found the wreckage. Oh, anyway, that's what we got. That's that's the story. You were going to say, Leanne? Um, I remember when I was very little, family friends of ours um, were playing on the beach with their little two-year-old daughter. Um, I think it was in Durban. And there was yeah. a, a helicopter crash on the beach, and um, the, their little daughter was killed. You're joking. Wow. What are the chances mm. of that? Yeah. My God, that's hectic. All right, um, other news. Let's just look at some of the other stories. So we've got a submarine, a helicopter. Now the African Union is seeking the restoration of civilian rule in Chad. Um, you know, there's another country we can ask JJ about later on, but um, the AU's 15-member 15, 15 security body, the Peace and Security Council, don't worry if you haven't heard of these. They're not particularly important. They voiced grave concern over the establishment of a military council headed by 37-year-old Mahamat Idris Dab Debi. Um, he's the, the, the military leader there. The African Union urged okay. the restoration of civilian rule in Chad after the veteran ruler um, and his son took charge following his father's death fighting rebels. The AU's 15-member uh, security body decided that this is uh, something they need to express grave concern about. And uh, the elder Debbie, who had ruled the vast semi-desert state with an iron fist for 30 years, surprise, surprise, mm. this happens quite a lot in Africa, died from wounds sustained in battle at the weekend. His mm -hmm. death was um, has stunned ally and former colonial ruler of France, which has relied on Chad in its campaign against a jihadist revolt in the Sahel region. Chad staged a state funeral for Debbie on Friday that was attended by French President Emmanuel Macron, who called on the newly appointed military government to foster stability, inclusion, dialogue, and democratic transition. Unreal, huh? This is all happening 
in real time on our continent. Did yeah. you know that? It's not a movie, folks. <laughs> no, isn't it? Isn't it just unbelievable? So um, we we may have a, a gap where we can ask uh, JJ about that this morning, but otherwise we'll be looking at Somaliland in which Africa has nothing Alice. to do with Legoland. No, nothing. Although what? Lego will come up, Lego will come up in our conversation with my brother later on when we talk about collecting. Ah. Uh... Uh, Vice President Kamala Harris said on Sunday that the U.S. government will help um, Central American farmers affected by climate change in an effort to address the root cause of migration. Harris has been tasked with spearheading President Joe Biden's bid to resolve the long-running problem of uncontrolled migration over the U.S.-Mexican border. The U.S. Department of Agriculture is going to increase their focus and their resources around helping farmers in, tr in Central America. So essentially what they want to do is they want to help farmers in Guatemala and Honduras and places like that so that they don't decide they're going to come to America. And she, okay, she, so had, to bring, it's definitely, she had to bring climate change into this. It's definitely a passive-aggressive <clears throat> version yeah. of what Trump was doing. So not the wall, but let's help them mm -hmm. um, just to prevent them from coming over. <clears throat> You're exactly right. It was a passive-aggressive version of the same thing. It's like mm. the end goal is we don't want you to come here, right? Yeah. But rather than rather than just say that like Trump did, Biden and Harris are going to be going around the outside saying, oh, no, but we'll help the farmers there, and therefore they'll prefer to stay in Guatemala and Honduras, which, of course, they won't no matter how much farming aid you give them. And they'd rather take their chances coming through to America. Let's see how this works. Let's see how, how well it goes. What would Kamala say, Sia? You can do it in her voice. <laughs> Oh my God. Well, you gotta just help the farmers. <laughs> you gotta Joe. just help the farmers, Joe. You gotta do it. <laughs> God, I hate that woman's voice. She drives me crazy. <laughs> All right, so there we are. Joe. We gotta yeah. help the farmers of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hey, speaking of the White House and, and um, the US. Apparently, there are new photos that have just come out showing uh, Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell as VIP guests a couple of times in the Bill Clinton White House. Mm, mm, mm. So Ooh, this is not going... to give me the creeps. I know, they give me the creeps too, but this is not going away anytime soon, is it? Have you? Did you see that this weekend um, the mansion on the island was completely demolished? No, was it? Oh. Did they blow it up? Yeah. There are these bulldozers came in and ripped that place down. And the neighbor, neighbors were very excited about it because they said there was no way that that property would have been taken up by someone else, not holding mm. all those horrible, dark, terrible secrets. So um, it's all been plowed to the ground and it's it's a fresh piece of land and ready to be redeveloped. Well, I I'm, I find that, don't you think it's a little suspicious? Don't be suspicious. Don't be, don't sus be oh, suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't be but, suspicious. I mean, like, <laughs> they, they, as far as I can tell, there are a few pictures taken from helicopters or drones over the island, but there aren't any pictures of what the place looked like. And I feel like ordinary old us in the public who may be interested in this story and think that there was this island where this monster Jeff Epstein used to take people. I think there was still stuff that we need to needed to investigate there. I think there was still, uh, you know, there was information. That. There was information that I think people are, are, are probably allowed to, they're, they're questions that people are allowed to ask. So... Mm. I don't think they should have just destroyed the place. I'm sure that they sucked everything out of that place that they could have. I mean, this the, the, all eyes were on this investigation. They would have had to have been completely thorough and done everything right. And to be quite honest, just from a decorative point of view, I remember there were some videos of the pink carpet leading up the brass oh my staircase God. going oh up my to God. the main bedroom. So I'm I'm just glad that that... That's not even oh, on our planet anymore. That is horrible. <laughs> well, let's see. Yeah, that's uh, that's the Jeffrey Epstein Island, and apparently uh, an uncomfortable series of photographs were released over the weekend, which um, which the Clintons won't won't want us to know about, where Jeff Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell were VIP guests, not just once, not just twice, yeah, but a couple of times. 
some dating else. back as, as far as 1993 and sure. shows Ghislaine and Jeffrey in the presidential reception area um, mm -hmm. within the Oval Office. They even like pictures of them in the East Room. That's where the president usually has very <laughs> close guests yeah. and hope the guests there and there are some new allegations of them donating money to the clinton administration and that's why they were also so close mm. and allowed to the white house mexico hmm. Mm -hmm. well one last thing that um, i want to go to before we cross to jj cornish um andre says megan deserved an oscar since the oscars are still ongoing that's Megan Markle. <laughs> I wonder if she actually gets her Oscar this year. Yes, I'm I'm sure that she will. Even if it's just the hearts and minds of all the people who knew she was bullshitting on live TV. Anyway, we've got to get to JJ Cornish. It is time for African Analysis, which is brought to you by the Johannesburg Business School. We look at what's going on on the African continent. JJ, good morning. How are you? Bonjour to you. I'm any better, I'd have to tell the cops, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So, JJ, this morning, I'm very excited because you said to us the other day, you teased that you would be telling us about a place called Somaliland, which sounds almost like it should be a made up place. But it kind of is a made up place in some ways because it's made up of of what are the, the remains of, of other colonial countries. Uh, it's in the Horn of Africa, but I don't know anything else about this. So why don't you take the stage and tell us about Somaliland? Somaliland is a former British protectorate, and it gained independence in 1960. Now, uh, Somaliland is located at the top of the Horn of Africa. If you took the horn, like a seven, yes, it's at the very top, with this area called Puntland at the very. We we like the we like the name Puntland. Puntland. Looks like, uh, yeah, I know. Uh, why don't you ask JJ, uh, just see if you, can, if you can get him back, Sia, and ask him if he can turn off his camera and then we might have, you know, audio because I don't want us to miss. I was, we were just getting into Puntland, Leanne, and I know that's your favorite part of Somali land. <laughs> yes. Um, Puntland. Or Puntland, which reminds, which rhymes <laughs> with something else. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, P U N T L A N D. He started telling us about this last week, and then we we kind of lost it you probably, somewhere. You probably way, say Puntland. Um, yeah, but I, I like you've got to say Puntland. Land. Let's, let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> I like this. All right, you'll see. Is going to get JJ back for us in a second. We'll find out about Puntland and Somaliland, and then a little bit later on, it is Collectomania where we'll talk about collections and all the different things that various people collect. It's something which we're doing along with the South African Gold Coin Exchange and the Scoin Shop, finding out about all the interesting things that people collect. And uh, this morning, we'll be talking to my brother. I managed to convince him that it would be a fun thing for him to tell us about his uh, collections. Was it difficult I mean, to he... convince him? Not really. I think he's kind of proud of having these, these collections. And I've told you, we're a bit of a collectomaniac family. So yeah. he's, he's got his own as well. Let's see if we can get uh, JJ back on here. Monsieur Cornish, hello. We're back. Sorry. You I just, hope, you just began, you began to back. tell us. Hmm? Yeah, you are. You're back. You began to tell us about Puntland, and then suddenly your, your internet uh, crashed out. Go for it. Well, those Puntlanders, they always knock me out. I don't know. I haven't said anything bad about them. But Okay. Now, Somalia got independence from Britain in, the, in 1960, as did Somalia which was an Italian uh -huh. colony. They right. joined up hoping for this concept of a greater Somalia, which would have taken in parts of Ethiopia and Kenya. It never happened. In the 80s, Siad Barre, the dictator in, Somali, in Somalia, a very bad dude as it happens, he turned uh -huh. on rebels in Somaliland. And from the capital from the uh jj can you just switch your camera off because i think maybe we'll get some audio out of you then 
Um, it's mm. the, your internet's gone. Just switch well, the camera uh, off, and then we'll. You know, we'll, in nineteen. Just let's see if we can get him with with. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Leanne and I are sitting here going, "Come on, come mm. on, internet, come back, come back to yeah. us, internet." <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. This is so frustrating. You know, some days um, we don't have any problems, and then other days we have lots. Yeah. Of them. And then, and then sometimes it's just one of the guests who's having a problem. So you could see JJ's little wheel of, of death over there. JJ, <laughs> you back? Just see if we can get just his audio. That was just starting to get exciting. It's like a story that's unfolding, and then suddenly he's yes. gone. No. I had no All idea. Right, so yeah, that's, uh, but it makes sense, time. though, that the English would say, so, "Yeah, this is Somaliland," and the Italians would say, "This is Somalia." <laughs> Well, I mean, you remember during World War II, um, Mussolini famously, there, there were a whole lot of, um, of, of, of troops stationed in, in eastern North, North Africa, and they were mm -hmm. uh, there were many South there were many South Africans who were dispatched to those parts of this continent to fight Mussolini, and um, and obviously Hitler in in, um, in Egypt and Libya. Uh, what was it, Rommel, at the Battle of El Alamein? So famously, there are a lot of South Africans involved there too. But people do tend to forget that um, that Somalia was and Ethiopia was. Uh, they, they were both Italian colonies for the longest time. Although it's it's true to say also that Ethiopia was one of those places that managed to maintain its independence um, mm -hmm. despite all the colonial um, incursions into that area. So there's there's quite a lot to talk about with Somalia and Ethiopia. Hopefully, we can get JJ back on mm -hmm. in a moment or two. Just to go quickly back to the uh, the Epstein stuff, which I, I just I'm sorry if I find this story as fascinating as I do, but I think everybody in the world who's not at least a little bit curious about Jeff Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell, I think you're really just not paying attention. I mean, it's so bizarre, right? So Angela says there's this brilliant documentary which is called, um, or she could even be referring. Sorry, Angela, you're referring to my octopus teacher, but um, Tracy says. You've got to watch Filthy Rich on Netflix. Left me with more questions than answers. And uh, according to Corona's Boring, Bill Clinton gives good speeches. That's why so many people have paid him billions to speak. That's true, too. Um, and then Tracy adding here that Ethiopia has a large black Jewish community. Hmm. That's interesting. Yes, the uh, – what do they call them? The um, – oh, I've just struck a blank. But yes, absolutely. All right, Sia, we're going to try with JJ quickly. And let's see if JJ, can you hear us now? Because if we can hear you, we're going to carry on. No. Damn. This is very, very Damn, annoying. brother. We're going to... No, no. All right. Well, we'll have to pick it up. I mean, what we'll do is um, we'll try and record JJ and then put him on uh, as a podcast. Uh, it's very frustrating when we, we seem to have these internet issues. And it's, it's only in the morning. When I spoke to him last time, I spoke to him in the afternoon and recorded it, and it was absolutely fine. Should we try one more time? I think I can see him there. Hello, hello, JJ Cornish, come in. No, no, he's gone. All right, sorry about that, everybody. Built it up and then- That's there. okay. We didn't follow through. But as I was saying, this this whole thing with um, with the uh, the the, Epstein Maxwell thing is just, it's very, it, the whole thing's a bit weird. The whole thing's yeah. very, very strange. And there's so many parts of it, like these connections to these extremely important and powerful people. You know, I saw uh, Prince Andrew with the whole, you know, with Prince Philip's death and everything. He suddenly made a reappearance, but he's otherwise been pretty much keeping quiet and keeping to himself. And you see the Clintons and, you know, Bill doesn't make very many appear appearances anymore because I think he's become an embarrassment Ooh. frankly you know bill uh despite the fact that uh that he wasn't impeached as president with all those women that he is supposed to have had affairs with i think bill's become an embarrassment he really has and jeffrey epstein knowing all of them is just very strange anyway Ooh. all right um <clears throat> we've got to, we, we'll move on from um, from JJ Cornish and we'll try and get him back for a little podcast update on the uh, Johannesburg Business School. I don't know why he, um, you know, suddenly the, the, the technical aspect of doing that has become so complicated. It was absolutely fine for weeks in a row. 
Hmm. Yeah. See, so, uh, are you upset by uh, that comment that was made earlier earlier by somebody who thinks that Megan should get an award for <laughs> an Oscar, an acting award for the Oscars? When I think about my housemate who walked in sometime last week and found me re-watching the interview. And like too much. <laughs> yeah. Too much different. <laughs> I was like re-watching it, but I had it on in the background. It's now like comforting viewing to have it on. And it's sad when I can also now quote a lot of it. <laughs> no, it's, yeah. Because it's no, very it's, ironic yeah. that I, for years I stood up and advocated for women's voices. But in yeah. this time, I was silent. Then Oprah says, were you silent? Were you silenced? Oh, masterpiece! <laughs> wow, we are what not a, worthy. What a what a, <clears throat> what a steaming heap of bullshit! Still, I, I even hearing you re relay the story for the I don't know umpteenth time, I'm like, what a lot of crap! Seriously, I told you that. Uh, I'm with you. <laughs> I told you I, I restarted watching Vikings um, and mm. I'm on season three now. And it's just, it's such a great show, you know. I know there's still many seasons to come and that excites me because I think I, I did, I started watching it when it came out and then I sort of lost interest, but now I'm back in. And uh, the other se series that I have to watch at some point because everybody's telling me how brilliant it is, is um, Peaky Blinders. Mm. Yeah, I couldn't I see I wasn't in the right frame of mind to get into it, but I just loved the cinematography and um, also the way they they put modern music to these olden day scenes. It's it's very cool, very cool. Well, um, we, there was what's there was a parent. <clears throat> what's that? What's the premise of Peaky Blinders? I don't know. Yeah, I've just heard it's a it's a really good. I think it's like Gangland London or Ireland mm. or something else. I can't He's remember. Got I think it's in the days of the of prohibition, uh, if I remember correctly. No, I'm not entirely sure. I'm not going to say anything because I'll get it wrong. That's yeah. that's probably that's probably the the worst explanation of a series you've ever heard is from us three <clears throat> when we haven't seen it. No, no. What so what I love about about Vikings is as violent as it is, and they do they include all the violence, right, and the sex and everything else. It's a it's a good solid series, but there's actually a little bit of historical accuracy too. You know, I like a little bit of history. So, if they include um, enough of the of the facts, uh, you know, there's this King Egbert of of Wessex, and then there's this guy called King Ayla of Northumbria, and they actually were they were people who really lived in the seven and eight hundreds AD. That kind of thing just keeps me interested. So, if Peaky Blinders has an element of of real history in it, then I'll go and take a look. But I've got to, I'm, I'm lining them up, so I've got to start lining up new series. Because, you know, the problem is, even though we're all working more or less at capacity and we're back to normal in, in many ways and going into the office like today, I've got to go into the office after the show, even though all of that's happening, there's still a bit of time. And we're not going out for dinner every night or we're not rushing around as much. We're not spending as much time in the traffic. It does free you up to watch interesting shows. So I've I've now got to go and um, line them up. I've got to have a, a bunch of them in a, you know, in a, a list of things that I want to get through because there's so many series that I missed out on. And I've I've never been a big TV watcher, so it's quite nice to have, like this. Uh, you settle in, you get a nice cup mm. of tea or whatever. You get a little blanket. You get on the sofa. I mean, don't tell me that isn't fun. Oh, it's so so beats being in traffic and wasting time like that. Driving to meetings. Now, the the weather allows. You know, I, I finished yeah. very I finished all of my work on Friday in the afternoon. Um actually I was I actually went into the office on, on Friday, so I had like a conventional, somewhat conventional day. I came yeah. home and realized I have nothing to do today. And I had one of my best and simplest guilty pleasures. I turned my phone off. Mm. And I climbed <laughs> at oh, that's nice. I slept all the way through up until like 11 p.m. I woke up. I had I didn't even know what you'd call that meal. Then is it dinner? Is it like an early breakfast? Is it whatever? At around 11, 
and then I went back to sleep at about one again and just woke up only on Saturday at about like eight or nine in the morning. Simplest random pleasure. Oh, you know what, Sia? That is that's that is pure therapy. I'll tell you what. I'm jealous of that too. Here's the thing that's nice about it is that we didn't have to record a TV show today. So we've we've already got a TV show in the bag for this Wednesday. Mm. And it's a good one. I think you're going to enjoy it. It's quite fiery. Um, but we recorded that last Wednesday. And, and you know, Sia has to be uh, on permanent standby for guests. And he's trying to arrange this one. And then this one cancels. And this one moves. And this one says to him, he's, they've got a doctor's appointment out of the blue. So he has to find someone else. So it's it's a it's a different kind of stress. And for this weekend, he actually didn't have to worry. And I didn't have to worry. I woke up on Saturday thinking, oh, my God, I've got to write some stuff for the TV show. And I suddenly went, I don't. Mm. I don't have to do any of that stuff. I can just sleep. You know, it's actually a, a friend of mine who got me into this habit when I can, which is very seldom, to turn mm -hmm. your phone off. Because when last yeah. did you do that? When were you yeah. able to? And it's still, I, I, I get a sense, scares my family around me because I just send a, a warning text to everyone to say, hey, I'm okay. I'm just turning my phone off for the evening. I'm turning my phone off for two hours. And it, like you actually get to really relax. And like sometimes you'll have your phone on silent, but you know it will vibrate and then that sets you off and then you think, what is happening? And then you do want to check your phone. But ah, uh, <laughs> less. It's like simple. I was watching a movie last night and um, it was set in 1977, and the only communication that these two on a road trip have is by stopping every now and then at a gas station to use the public phone, and they kind of <laughs> say where they are, and they get back into the car, and they disappear yeah. for 10 hours. Well, <laughs> remember, remember those days of landlines. We will we'll be back in a couple of minutes. We've just got to take a break for the 7 o'clock podcast. It is 7.04 already. So we're a little bit late, but we've got lots of other stuff to talk about. And I've got a nice description of what Peaky Blinders is so that we don't screw it up for those people who might actually want nice. to watch it. So there's lots more on the way. Cliffcentral.com. Stick around. It is the 26th of April. Hi, I'm Timothy Maurice, a behavioral psychology author and host of the Brain and Brand Show. Check out my latest episode where I show you how to apply behavioral economics, behavioral science, to get into the unconscious minds of your clients and stakeholders. You can listen on cliffcentral.com, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Come out to 
Podcast. Finding quick solutions is key to a great economic quarter. Use the Nando's app to order a quarter chicken with any single side for only 49 rand in just 20 seconds. Nando's. Fire it up. Well, cliffcentral.com on a Monday morning. It is uh, one of those weird days which is wedged between uh, a long weekend, well, what would have been a long weekend, and a public holiday. So we just, we're just we trying to figure out how many people are actually working today and how many people are taking the day off. Because I'm sure there are some who've managed to, lots of people managed to persuade their um, employers or their employees, depending on who, which position you're in, that today wasn't an important day to go in and uh, and do work but if you are working today good for you we are and we're happy to be here we have uh, collector mania coming to you in this hour and we've also got lots of other stuff to catch up on yes here you're going to say sorry i interrupted you yeah it was a a very busy weekend and i made the mistake operative term mistake of going to a mall yesterday the oh. line and the amount of people around considering it is a weekend, which some people have made a long weekend, and yeah. also was a day weekend. So, oh, just tons and tons and tons of people. Mm-hmm. Not a good move. So, mm-hmm. so where, what did you have to go to a mall for? Because I am still not a hundred percent sold on that idea. I don't mind going to um, restaurants and you know bars or whatever, but I'm not in a hurry to go to a mall because they make you wear the, the stupid masks, uh, which they don't do in restaurants. And um, and you have to sanitize at every shop, right? So every time you walk into a shop, you have to sanitize your hands again. And well, I was walking just, out of there looking like a crab. I was <laughs> conveniently in the area, <clears throat> excuse me, around Santon, and my <laughs> paranoia was on full alert going to Santon City yesterday after the bomb scare on Saturday evening. And I was just thinking, is this how I'm going to die, Jesus? Is this what is going to happen now? <laughs> just Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, they could have tried the bomb uh, to set the bomb off on Saturday and then they got caught. But then now they thought, oh, Sunday, so really <laughs> get going. So hang on. Like, uh, it was a proper bomb scare and they, 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 did they evacuate the whole of Santa City? People had to be evacuated. And now I'm just... Uh, you know, just piecing things together from people who I know who were there, also the, the news reports. But there was an official bomb scare around 17.35, so that's about, what, half past five on Saturday mm-hmm. afternoon. And yeah. there, there was just chaos and paranoia that was just set off instantly. And you think about the the magnitude of Santon City, that's if you've been there before, yeah. how... Huge you're meant to get people in order in a time like that. Like, you just cannot do that. People were not standing in line, (laughs) not waiting for people. They were meant to go to only certain key entrances. But how do you relay all of that information in a short space of time? So people were crying and having to, you know, grab a hold of their kids and push trolleys. I heard sure. this, I, it's not an official word from Sandton City, but yeah. I heard that some people actually had to wait and pay for their parking before they had to <laughs> If that is real, I think that's a massive faux pas in terms of yeah. the safety and evacuation tool. Really, you can't let people just go in in an emergency but now they still have to figure out where their tickets are and to get change and you know how those machines work sometimes I, it's we can laugh at it now because nothing bad happened but you know yeah. sometimes you put your your note in and then it rejects it and then you have to almost rub your note on your leg and then you put it in imagine all of that happening when there are whistles and bells going off all around you that would have freaked me out i've i've never been in a mall where they've they've done anything like that <clears throat> I've been, I remember we used to do like fire drills at school and, and mm. stuff, but I've, I've always remembered what Mabali said. She, she said to me, if she walked into a shopping mall and everybody else started running, she would run. 
automatically yeah. she just drove yes. in so, the direction in the same direction as everyone else she'd be like i don't know what the hell's happening here i don't need to find out but i'm going to run wherever those people no, are but running. she she proved that theory wrong though with me <laughs> when we were when we were doing that um cycle race thing that damon was doing and the two of us were in yes. a combi and there was that huge herd of cattle in this rural yeah. village um, yes. which was walking walking up the dirt road towards us. And they were all fine. <laughs> My ballet and I were standing outside the combi. I was probably having a cigarette. And then yeah. one of the bulls decided to hump one of the females and cause <laughs> this massive stampede. <laughs> and on this narrow road on a mountain edge, they started <laughs> stampeding towards the combi. And you could see that, that we were not going to make it. You could oh see that God. there was not enough space between the combi and, and the rest of the, the cows. And my ballet just didn't even see it coming. So I pushed her into the combi because she was in front of me. I, I basically face-dived her into the, the cushions and then jumped on top of her from behind. So, so, so that she just disproved that theory because she, she wasn't no. doing any running. <laughs> wasn't paying well, attention. God bless my friend, and this should come to no surprise then if people think I'm dramatic, but I mm -hmm. clearly equally have as dramatic people around me because she saw people running and then she started to run as well. No questions yeah. asked. <laughs> and then before even hearing about what had happened, and I'm surprised she even admitted it, she said she started crying. I thought, you didn't even know why people were running, but you were already <laughs> crying. You are not the person for the situation. But then I was very touched in a macabre way that I was one of three people that she called during this. Because you think it's a disaster once you know what's yeah. happening and you could die. Who do you call for your last goodbye? So she called and her you, family and then me, and I thought, oh. <laughs> oh you, you see, Sia, you are kind of special. Um, and then you missed her call, so we'll see. Oh, oh, oh yeah. So, so she would have wasted one of her final calls on you because you wouldn't even have answered. Um, I just want to quickly go back. We were talking about Peaky Blinders as a show. So here's a good explanation of it from um, Beautiful Creatures, who says Peaky Blinders is a, is a great show. It's based on 1900 in Birmingham. And the gangs there, the sister in the series was Helen McCrory, who actually died a couple of weeks ago, age 52. I saw that and I had to look up a picture of her to see who uh, Helen McCrory was. But when I saw the picture, then I kind of uh, I clicked immediately. Um, we could see if, if you can find a picture of her quickly, Sierra, and put it up. And then Claire says, this is pretty wild. Um, Claire says her fiancé became a Norse pagan. That's, that's like a religion after watching Vikings. He's taken it up as a spiritual following. My neighbors are hysterical because we have a ram's head skull on our patio, which is a Viking symbol of strength. <laughs> so just from, let me understand this right, uh, Claire, just, just from watching the TV show, that's what he's done. He's decided to follow Norse pagan religion. It's pretty wild, huh? Yeah, I'd say. That is super wild. Um, I, I don't think a TV show would get me to change my... Uh, my feelings on religion, but then you never know, huh? If it's good enough, maybe. Uh, Tracy says it's flight, fright, or fight. It's amazing how most people fight uh, fit into one of them. <laughs> fight. It's amazing how people fit into one of those three categories. Well, what do you think you are? Clearly, Leanne, you're like a flight person because you you even you even pushed my belly in to mm -hmm. so you both flee. <laughs> I don't stay around to fix up the situation. <clears throat> for sure. No, I mean. Listen, if, if someone's like uh, shooting or there's a you know, some terrible disaster is happening, uh, fly, flight is still the best one to do. Like if you can get away, get away, right? Don't yeah. be a hero. But it's interesting if I see um, like an enormous rain spider in the house, I have a moment of fright where I just freeze. Yeah. And there's I, I stop breathing. And then it's, <laughs> then it's like, okay, run. <laughs> Well, I mean, famously, your your Portuguese were tap airlines. Don't panic! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't panic! Yeah. Run! Run! <laughs> Never forgotten that. Here's a photo of Helen, by the way. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember her. Shame. So she she was only fifty two, huh? That's a good fifty two. Yeah. 
All doesn't right. ring a bell though. I don't know her. Maybe it's lost on me. Yeah, and no, I've seen her in a couple of shows. She's she's um, married to uh, what was that series with Claire Danes and the the red haired guy, um, like this, American oh, well. political. Yes, yes, yes. The same guy who's who's the uh, the lead in Billions. Yes, she's married no. to him. She's married and to that dude. <clears throat> she lost her battle with da cancer. Dame, Dame, what is his name? Uh, da yes. Damien or Dame, Dame, something like that. Yeah. Jesus, we're useless with names. Homeland. Well. Homeland, Homeland thank you, Tracy. The 32nd partners ever at this rate. No, <laughs> I, I'm usually quite good at these things. Maybe my memory is starting to fade. Maybe you're going to have to put me into a, a, a mental Lewis. hospital. Damien no, Lewis. No, Gareth, don't say that. Well, it's two things this morning. I couldn't remember the name of... of Damien Lewis, and I couldn't remember um, what they call the, the the black Jews of Ethiopia. I've gone blank on two things this morning. It's not a good sign. Tell you what, Are we going to have to not like good. In your porridge before we start the show. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, <laughs> it might not so be that far. Yeah, you're going to have to spoon feed me porridge, and then we might get like three, four minutes of good show out of me every morning. The rest of the time, I'll be going. <laughs> in the oh no. It'll mm. it'll be it'll be the opposite of what it is now. So that little break we have during the podcasts, yes. <laughs> that'll be the time you're lucid. <laughs> <laughs> then it, I'll be no use the rest of the time. The rest will be ads and songs. <laughs> yeah, I'll wake. Up. <laughs> I'll just wake up for those three minutes. Hello. <laughs> we interrupt this broadcast. Gareth is lucid. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we can get some. Get some value out of him. Yeah. Uh, and I know we've discussed this a million times, but I, I am drinking a lot of tea lately. Maybe too much tea. How do you know if you're having too much? Oh, gosh, Gareth. If you've been like thinking is, that, I think you're already. Is three, is three cups of tea a day a lot? <clears throat> you're drinking builder's tea, though, which has caffeine in it. If you're drinking herbal tea, you can go tea. on and on. I mean, builder's tea. <laughs> what are you talking builder's about? Tea. Builder's what, tea. Builder's tea. It's um, you know, normal black tea with milk and sugar. That's is that what you call builders' tea? Oh, that's it sound what so they real. call it in the, in the <clears> UK. <throat> All right. That's, that's well, then what it's, it's builders' in the I, UK. I won't. I refuse to be embarrassed by this. I fine. I drink builders' tea. Good. <laughs> you and your herbal you tea. To be embarrassed. Yeah. I'm not going to get upset about this shit. Are you? Are you crazy? <laughs> So, yeah, we're, we're not going to be on tomorrow, by the way, because it is um, Freedom Day. But we do have a TV show on Wednesday and the morning show on Wednesday morning. So looking forward to both of those. And I plan to do zero tomorrow. Um, the only thing I might do is spend time with the family, which is always nice. And, uh, you know, have some nice food, which, again, is that's kind of a thing now. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not a I'm not a live to eat kind of guy, but. What we did on Saturday, my sister's boyfriend made us Mexican food, like Mexican wraps, mm. um, <clears throat> which was very tortillas. nice. I mean, tortillas, exactly. Um, we were, you know, I've, I've got very plain uh, kind of Philistine tastes when it comes to food. You don't, you don't really get me um, excited about food. I, I like plain food. I like... Ordinary stuff. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm not one of those people who likes particularly fancy or exotic menu items. But th this is this is kind of where it's fun to have someone else who likes cooking. And my sister's boyfriend loves to cook. He, it's one of the things, and he's very good at it. Like he makes incredible uh, lamb. He does these like chicken kebabs. He does these brilliant curries, all that kind of thing. So he decided it was Mexican time. So we had these tortillas, and they were really good. Like he used mm. black beans and um, refried uh, beans, yeah, 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 and and uh, you put a little bit of cheese in there, and it was Guac. really good. Guac, sour cream, correct, all of that stuff, very nice. So mm. well, that was good, and and now now we've kind of strong armed him into doing something like this every week for us. So now whether he likes it or not, he has to he has to cook for us. He's become our cook. Yummy, mm. I am. Uh, I'm trying to avoid family time or just even calls <laughs> in different cities because I'm in Why? the hot box with my parents. What have you done? They finally 
finally caught on to the fact that every time I go home, I don't think I'm the only one who does this. I shop when I'm at my parents' house. I leave there with at least two or three <laughs> from their house. And the fact that my dad and I are also similar in stature, which means I can also steal stuff from him. <laughs> because <laughs> looking for a very specific t-shirt of his. And just by chance, I was on the phone with my mother. And she goes, do you happen to know where this would be? I'm like, of course I do. It's here with me. Oh, so you, st you actually stole you stole from them, basically. You're a thief. <laughs> no, I'm not stealing. You shop. It's your parents. It's home. So it, it doesn't really count. And yeah, I there is a there is a distinct there is a distinct difference between my parents' pantry cupboard and mine. Yes, so and so one has to one has to balance these things out, you know. No, why do they need like ten cans of whatever in the pantry? So at least take like two. Oh, so you help yourself. You you just go you just go in there and and uh, it, that's what you mean when you say shopping. You don't mean actually going to the shops. You mean like taking from oh, there. Yes. And, yes. Okay, okay, nice. Yeah, that's good. I'm, we'll try and yeah. If anybody's thinking of having Sia around as a house guest, just understand that he he probably he probably says he's only going to do this at his parents' house, but he clearly has no respect for property. So he'll I come into your house and help himself too. Parents. No, man, there's a different standard with your parents. And I thought we were still being very nonchalant and she was asking out of curiosity, but she was actually quite ticked off by it. <laughs> this no, is I would be. No, why? See, there's a huge difference between inviting people into your house and saying to them, Here, here's you know anything you want to eat and drink and you know, supply all this stuff, or C.S. Sanguini just going into the pantry and helping himself to everything and then not just having it there in the house, but taking it home with him as well. You don't think that's wrong? I would call no. Lucia, according to my list of <clears throat> um, old English words to describe people, I might call you a dandy prat or a, or a fenayong. <laughs> fenayong? <laughs> what the hell are those? A fenayong is a lazy and you, irresponsible person. How do you spell uh, that? It's French. So it's F-A-I-N, E yeah. with an accent, mm -hmm. A-N-T, Fénéon. Okay. Never heard and that a, before. A dandy prat is an unimportant <laughs> or despicable person. <laughs> oh, no, I don't like either of those. <laughs> no dandy shame. I, 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 couldn't find, I couldn't find one that was mild enough for you. Um, uh, you also get a, 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 a cockalorum. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's definitely a, see a cockalorum. A, a, post, a postal and self-important person. Oh, right. I'm definitely a cockalorum. You you may be a, a froward, which mm -hmm. is someone who is always arguing with and disobeying others. Um, I've also that's got a. Me. a yeah. Or you you Gareth might be a bit of a Nash gab and and that starts with a G, a silent G. Yeah. Um and that is someone who complains all the time. Mm -hmm. Um ooh, I have a I have a family friend who's one of these. A groke. That's how do you spell groke? G R O K E. Okay, what the, what is it? To stare at someone who is eating in the hopes that they will share their food. Oh come on! <laughs> a great, um, it's a great word. A moon moon calf. I think um, da Damon might be a moon calf. A foolish or absent-minded person. Yeah. Uh, Lan Prasado. I just want to point out that the the worst of all of these descriptors that you've given us so far this morning is still Dandy Pratt, and that's the one you went for first yes. for Sia. I think that's so <laughs> mean. <laughs> It's like a despicable person. I mean, Jesus. He's, he, doesn't get much also, worse than that. He's also a bit of a quidnunk. He's also a bit of a quidnunk. It? It's a quidnunk. An inquisitive, gossipy person. <laughs> oh, yeah. A little bit. Gareth, why are, you, why are you agreeing to this? Well, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, none, I of those, none of those... None of those... None of those are accurately describing the fact that he steals from his parents, but I do no. like some of these words. These it are good words. Theft. It's not theft. It's yeah, sure. 
maybe taking an early inheritance because my my mother actually made me take <laughs> stock of everything that I've taken, and I was surprised it's quite a lot. Firstly, I don't know anyone in their twenties who would know where to buy Tupperware, even though we need it. So all of my Tupperware comes from my parents' house. Where do you even begin to get Tupperware? Waste pack. Goodness me, Sia. I haven't, um, yeah, I haven't got a lot of Tupperware in my house, which is surprising for someone who's as OCD as I am. Mm -hmm. Whenever I'm looking for a Tupperware, I can never find one. And I know I've bought like three or four of them, but they're always gone. And I know that there's, there's this ongoing thing about like people who, they can never find the lid for the Tupperware. Mm. They, yeah. they, it's like a big thing. And, you know, people joke about it, that there's this place where all the Tupperware lids go to. But I'm mm. I'm not a big Tupperware guy. I know people who like to keep uh, 10,000 Tupperwares all over their house. And they're always full of, like, old food and shit. Um, no, I, but you I know can't what, stand if you, that stuff. If you have a really big lunch, like we did yesterday after um, the memorial service, um, mm. it's nice to have Tupperware to send stuff home with people. Um, but right. we, we do, as a family, we tend to go to the next person's house with our bottoms, our mismatched bottoms and tops, <laughs> and, <laughs> and find the rest in the drawers of the other family mm. members. <laughs> That's why you need ice cream containers. We don't do that. And then my mother also has to forgive me because I love to experiment with her beauty products every now and then. You know, we, no, we have nice, some yeah. interest like that. So most recently when I left Durban, she has this body, this new body lotion that has mild gold glitter infused. In it. <laughs> <laughs> this is fabulous. Remember when Twilight was a thing and supposedly when one of the vampires or whatever. Glittered, yeah. And they glitter. That's what it does for me. So I thought, how dare I not take this opportunity? <laughs> Gold pieces that glitter. So I took that just recently. It's fine. Oh man, <laughs> really? See, <laughs> now see, you're stealing. Idea. Now you're also stealing cosmetics from your mother. I mean, this is outrageous. Basically, keep him away from anything that you treasure. That's all we need to know. Um, every time a sock disappears, Kelly says it turns into a Tupperware lid with no matching container. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you see. That, that is a thing, these socks and these Tupperwares that go missing. Tupperware is overrated, although with a big family, I guess we don't have leftovers. Yeah. Yeah, th 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 that's also true. There will be one or other Karen that is a Tupperware agent. Mm -hmm. Remember that used to be those, that used to be a thing, right? There used to In be the these. 80s. Yeah. Yeah, these women had Tupperware clubs and things, didn't they? Mm-hmm. Well, well oh. I mean, in those days, we were all good housewives and... Um, you know, we needed a good selection of Tupperware. When I say we, uh, I was not a housewife during that. that no, era. I was going to say. I mean, like it sounds like almost as if you've got um, you've got memories that very uncomfortable, traumatic memories from no. the eighties. I you mean, being we, a housewife. we we as <laughs> as women were were expected yes. to, yeah. yeah. Have you ever watched those ads or read those ads? Because they were mostly in print. You know, they were in the newspaper or whatever. But those ads of you know women. Make sure that when your husband gets home, you look pretty and that you have a mm. nice meal ready for him in the oven. That's Gosh. the kind of thing. That, yeah. Yes. I mean, there, there, were, yes. there were books on that. So there were books right. on um, the fact that you needed to get up an hour earlier before your husband so that you could do your hair and makeup. Um, <laughs> yes. And have, and, and have children, and it even mentioned specifically putting bows in their hair. Before they sat down at the breakfast table. Yes, because why should he have to look at you um, and, and you haven't made yourself ready and you're not pretty for, for him first thing in the morning? Obviously, Fuck you that. should. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, yeah. You've got to be kidding. Yeah. Yes. If you're lucky, if you're lucky, I'll still have my makeup on from the night before so I don't look that ghastly. Oh, beautiful. Let, let me tell you, those ads are hilarious. Those good housekeeping ads, like, you know, make sure that when he gets home from work, you don't moan and complain about your day. Nobody wants to know about your day. He's been working hard to bring home the bacon. Rather ask him how he is and sit and listen quietly and don't complain or argue. I actually used to say that to women. It was a conversation a few months ago on Twitter. People were, yeah, really shocked at someone who... 
a young person who's in a relationship who wakes up very regularly earlier yeah. than a partner to bake him scones because he loves scones. And that is just a thing. Like she would wake up at like 4 a.m. Just not, not every day, but very often. To wake if he up likes and- scones in the morning, then he must get up and fucking make them himself. <laughs> but also, you know, in this world of like Instagram and, and filters and all the rest of it, I think a lot of people are, um, are, are terrified of being seen in their natural state. In other words, without having, you know, being made up or having their hair done or whatever else it is. Some people wake up in the day. And they actually look pretty terrible, and they don't want other people to see that. So mm. there, there, there are probably lots of people who do this. It's not just the old housewives yeah. from the nineteen fifties. Oh, yeah, I have a, I have a friend who's she's she's not embarrassed by the way she looks when she wakes up in front of us, you know, yeah. friends and family. But boy, do we laugh at her because you will not recognize her. She looks completely oh. different to what she looks like during the day. And uh, so she gets up and she, you know, she won't even have a business <laughs> room call without putting everything on. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. All right. Listen, it's time for Collectomania. And this is where we uh, we go into, into people's collections. It's something that we've decided to do with the South African Gold Coin Exchange and the Scoin Shop. And today we're going to continue our weekly dose of Collectomania. We're going to talk about the compulsive collections that people all over the place have. And today it's close to home, literally, because I managed to talk my brother into doing this with us. He's here to tell us about his collection. You can actually see it in the background in his picture, too. Hello, Rob. How are you? Morning. I hope you can hear me clearly. Yeah, perfectly. Yeah, perfectly. He's got So he's got this room, my brother, where he's got a whole bunch of stuff that, first of all, they're, they're, it's, it's not just one kind of collection. He's collecting a whole, whole lot of things, which we'll get to in a second. But I said to you, my family are all compulsive collectors of some kind or another. You know, I collect swords and coins and books and chemicals from the periodic table. And my brother collects completely different things. But I almost feel like he collects these things because when we were kids, we used to love action figures. We used to watch all those cartoons on TV. And then we would want the toys. And I still think that my brother had... I don't, and you must have had like a, you must have, must have felt deprived or something because now you're making up for it, and you, you have so many of these things. No, no, no. It's seriously. You, why don't you explain what you collect first, and and then we'll talk it through. So, so, yeah, it, it morphs. What I've decided to do, and go. It's not a room. It's my home office, so it is functional. Uh, yeah. I just tried to decorate it with you know live organic. Well, it's plastic, but I mean it's. You know, actual things rather than just a wallpaper or a painting. Um, yeah. you know, is it a bit over the top? Definitely. Do people walk in and go, "Shit, what are you?" I mean, <laughs> what are you thinking? Yes, but for me, it's this kind of small hobby that just morphed into something. I think half the half the fun of collecting anything is actually the hunt of finding it, um, and then you know, the question is, what do you do with it once you get it? And I think all people. You know, in some way, shape, or form, collect something. Um, it might not mm. be something physical. It might be mm-hmm. you know, photos. It might be like you swords, coins, stamps. I mean, it's been going on for a, a long, long time. And the interesting thing is, once you get into something, whether it be you know action figures, watches, Lego, cars, vintage cars, there's yeah. a whole subculture within that, and you actually learn that, believe it or not. These, these things you collect can often be pretty good investments too. I mean, for me, that's always quite an interesting thing. You don't just buy it, you know, put it away and you know, forget about it. You, you, you can always go and sell a lot of these things. There's a market. Um, so I'll explain a bit more about that. But yeah, I mean, I'm collecting currently uh, the, the two sets of action figures. Obviously, I'm a big Star Wars fan. So Star Wars is, is one of the sets that kind of, or the themes that I, have, have gone after for a number of years. And then, mm-hmm. as you mentioned, when we were kids, oh, wow. in the houses of the universe, yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I built during lockdown. To, to so l- let, me, let me just explain. So my, my brother built that table. That's the coffee table in his, in his office. And inside it is a, is a Millennium Falcon, which is the, that's the ship from Star Wars. And he's got all the little, uh, the little men 
and uh, it's it's got lights and it's it's pretty incredible. I mean, he's it's, so this whole room is just essentially wow. It is a wee. it is a it is a functional room, but he's had cabin. About, sorry, Gary, yeah. about that yeah. ship in the in the the coffee table. So that was until um, I think end of last year the biggest Lego set ever produced. It had seven yeah. and a half thousand blocks making up that spaceship, and Whoa. that's why I'm currently actually second because they released. Um, an architectural set, uh, which is a copy of the Colosseum in Rome, which is now wow. the biggest set ever produced, 9,000 pieces. So they upped it from 7,500 to 9,000. Um, Unbelievable. So, so, yeah, I mean, Lego Lego is the other thing I collect. That's a hell of an interesting theme. I'm certainly not, by any way, shape, or form, the, the, the leading kind of Lego expert in South Africa. There are guys in South Africa that are doing brick fair, that are you know, collecting literally thousands of sets. I'm only kind of getting into Lego, but Lego is hell of interesting because it's a very liquid market, believe it or not. If you yeah. if you want to buy a Lego set, you can go and buy it at the Lego store, which obviously is great now that South Africa has our own, <coughs> you know, official Lego stores. Mm -hmm. But you can go and build the set. As long as you keep all the pieces, you can actually sell it um, for, I would say, you know, depending on obviously the, the quality of... of you know how you keep it or if you have the box you can sell it for 75 to 80 percent of what you paid for it two or three years later if not you can sell it for a lot more mm. <clears throat> so, well look, yeah. i just i, I want to say quickly whenever i've walked into your office i mean i always i'll spend minutes maybe even up to half an hour just looking around there's so much going on there mm. there's so much to see it looks half like a like a shop and you haven't taken some of these out of the packaging because you want to keep them pristine right so they as a collection it, it's more valuable if you keep them in their boxes right yeah well, i mean lego is an example you have a sealed set it's going to be probably 20 percent to 50 percent more than a set which you've opened built and then just put back in ziploc bags so people do pay a premium for anything that's sealed as an example let's go back to he-man i mean when we were mm -hmm. kids E-Man retailed, I think there was a, a, a hyper store down the road from us back in the day. They were 9 Rand 99. I remember that. I remember thing. that. God, if we love those the, things. Yeah, if you had the foresight or the, the willpower to keep a He-Man in its original packaging from 1981 <laughs> or 83, today on eBay, 15,000 US dollars. What? 15,000 US dollars. Mint, you know, sealed uh, uh, He-Man. So Unbelievable. I mean, there's quite a few, very, I did a bit of research and there are quite a few interesting, in, in fact, there are one or two documentaries, which if anyone's interested, they should watch. There's one specific one on Netflix called The Toys That Made Us, which has got an episode dedicated to each kind of sub-theme, Barbie, He-Man, mm -hmm. Lego, mm -hmm. Star Wars, etc. cetera. Uh, and there are a few interesting facts that, that come out of that. And obviously, Star Wars being the biggest kind of movie franchise, or in my opinion, anyway, ever. Sure. Uh, ever. The, the, so George Lucas obviously came out of, you know, producing, I think, one mildly successful movie and he had the Star Wars script. He did Star Wars. Um, and, and, and while he was negotiating with whichever, uh, uh, you know, production company was backing it, I can't remember which one, 20th Century Fox, I think. So he said to them, look, I can actually command a $500,000 salary as a director, but I'd like to keep my salary where it was previously, which is $150,000. But right. in exchange for that, you've got to give me all the merchandise, uh, rights to the merchandise and the, the, you know, follow the movies that follow on from the original, which funny enough, they agreed to. Okay? So here's the fact. <laughs> Star Wars in, in, in its entirety um, yeah. in the box office has actually taken in $7 billion in ticket revenue. Mm -hmm. Now, the merchandise, which includes obviously its toys, you know, all, all the stuff, T-shirts, everything sure. that goes with that. 27 billion dollars so that's, that's <laughs> wow. like, so george Lucas, you know for a three hundred and fifty thousand <clears> dollar <throat> cut in his pay which would have been immediate ended up over his obviously his star wars life cycle when he when he also sold it to disney he made five and a half million dollars billion sorry five and a half billion in exchange yeah. for about 350 million. All right, so, so so I mean, a lot of this stuff people just collect because they themselves are, are crazy about something. But actually, as you point out, there could be there could be a part of this that's really about an investment. I mean, yeah. we know people we know people collect art 
We know people collect, um, and that's an acceptable collection. You know, nobody's going to look at an art collector and go, oh, that's such a weird thing that you collect. But there might be people who, you know, collect fossils, for example. And those fossils may end up being very, very valuable to, to someone else. And because there are other collectors in the world, they'll pay a premium for sure. the stuff that you've, you, you've gathered. Now, what is the most exciting part of hunting for these missing pieces of your collection? Because, I mean, you, you've got to also draw a line. You don't want to spend, you know, hundreds of thousands of rands, especially because who's got that now, on, on one item that most people would think is ridiculous. Yeah, so look, the, the, the thing with South Africa that's a, a bit challenging, look, Lego, you can pick up anything. Uh, uh, so whatever you want to source, it's not only in the US, you can get pretty much everything here. Some of the action yeah. figure stuff, you don't have at retail here. You've got to actually import it on eBay, and then you pay quite a, a heavy shipping cost, etc. But the big thing is we, we obviously had our, I think the Comic Con was two, two, two or three years ago. So Comic Con is obviously the big thing where in the US, I mean, people, you know, sleep for three nights outside a, a, an event yeah. uh, uh, arena just to get tickets. And every right. Comic Con, they also have exclusive items, whether it's a Lego minifigure, whether it's a, you know, action figure you don't get anywhere else. And these these items specifically are obviously very hard to find. A lot of guys yeah. will buy three if they go to Comic Con and they'll sell two at a massive premium and it will pay for their whole Comic Con cost. So, so yeah. Chasing these hard-to-find uh, right. items is really exciting. I just want to ask you one other thing before before I let Leanne and Sia ask a bunch of questions. But you've got two boys who are, yeah. you know, they also they love toys. Now, how do they? How do you keep them from going in there and opening everything up mm. and spoiling your whole collection? Because I mean, they they they're not uh, they're not little shits, but the temptation is so great. There's no way that they don't go in there and sometimes try and open the door and have a look when you're not around. No, they do. They're allowed in. They, they <laughs> look, I've had a few Lego sets to be pillaged, specifically by, by my youngest. Um, which, you know, I mean, what am I going to do? You know, they, 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 they don't understand. So I don't mind that they come in and open stuff. It's not the end of the world. Um, but I think they, they kind of see it as something that they're also part of. You know, they're helping me, you know, build, especially Lego. It's such a fantastic... Um, mm. You know, toy to be able. You don't just play with it as a as a once off. You can continually reuse it, rebuild it, and yeah. You know, during lockdown, you know, we were stuck in the house, so Lego became quite a big, you know, a big thing for us to do together. Especially when you can't really go out and do anything else. And yeah, mm -hmm. their their love for for toys like Lego. I mean, it's very evident. Obviously, I'm fueling it a little bit too much. But, but yeah, they, they're very much part of this. You know, they, they, they enjoy it as much as I do. Yeah. I mean, there's a comment here that when you have kids, you sometimes have to give up, give up some of your nice stuff. And that's true. Mm -hmm. but, it's, but it must be, I mean, listen, when we were kids, we, just, we used to fantasize about getting those toys. And we'd think about it. It was the most exciting thing in the world when you got it. And it was just like the beginning of the, the best day of your life. When your dad got home and he's like, "Yeah, I brought you a present, and this is it." Uh, yeah, it was wrong. always, it was always. A, sorry, Sia. Um, it was always a, almost a sign of wealth when we were younger. Like mm. that's how we measured wealth was how many Barbies are from the collection our friend had, or how many He-Man figures they had. Yeah, um, <laughs> and, and it was like. Oh, well, they must be really wealthy because she's got five Barbies. <laughs> and the whole set. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Rob, how, far have you ever, how far have you ever gone for your love of collecting? Have you traveled somewhere specifically just to get the item? Have you pulled in a big favor to get something? Uh, no, I mean, I've never traveled. The thing is with, with the current, you know, delivery systems worldwide, it's so easy just to get something you know, direct to your door without having to put in much effort. But I mean, geez, yeah, one day I'd love to go to, you know, the big San Diego Comic Con and just experience that whole thing. The South African Comic Con was fantastic. Um, and I went with a mate of mine. That was very, very cool to see. You won't believe how, you know, how many thousands of people come out and, you know, are passionate about something very odd that maybe isn't part of their daily life. <laughs> and they've got this, you know, this little alter ego that, you know, is fueled by, you know, really, really big passion in, in something bizarre, whether it's Lego blocks, or, you yeah. know, yeah, who knows? 
Um, but no, I've never really, I don't think done anything that mad yet. But yeah, one day I'll go with the kids, go to Disneyland and, you know, look at that whole Star Wars world that they've created there. That would be pretty cool. Well, it's also nice to kind of have the stuff around you in the way that you want. I mean, you, you had those cabinets specially built so that you could have yeah. all of this stuff. And as sure. you say, it's part, of, it's part of the decoration of the room. It's not just a, a place to mm. store things. And I think yeah, that's you, pretty cool. You know, I mean, you put it in a box and put it in an attic or a storage in your garage. I mean, what's the point there? You know, for yeah. me, it was no. really, the vision mm. was to have this, this kind of, uh, you know, interactive room where obviously I spend most of my my work time when I'm at home. So, so yeah, it's, it's, it's like just a really cool, interesting room for, for me. Ha yeah. Having, having it on display like that, um, there's a fine line between what some people would call a hoarder and other people would call a collector. And by, by putting stuff in a, in, in a good order in lit up cabinets that have been specially made, you're definitely out of the hoarder bracket. <laughs> yeah. I've also been told that I've got a, stop now which i have so yeah i think the last thing i added would have been last year late last year so i've actually just run out of space leanne but yes i've also had to draw the line out <laughs> because i just have nowhere nowhere else to put anything for now so unless i go and sell a whole lot of stuff but gareth here's an interesting one for you the most valuable lego minifigures in the world mm -hmm. valued at two billion dollars they're three You're joking of three okay and the reason they're worth so much money is because they were made out of space grade aluminium. Okay, it was yeah. a little minifigure sculpt of the Roman god Jupiter. Yeah. His wife Luno and then Galileo Galilee. So Lego wow. made them together with NASA and they put them on. I think the spaceship to Jupiter was called Luna. They put them on Luna and they sent them to Jupiter. Okay. So yeah. just the cost of making them is probably five to ten thousand dollars because of the material and they made one yeah. extra set so the one went off on the rocket there's one extra set which i'm assuming is owned by lego which is worth uh, an indescribable amount of money but lego minifigures also it's this crazy limited edition i mean they made lego went and released uh, uh there was a competition where you could win a solid 18 karat gold c3po lego minifigure there were only five mm -hmm. in the world <laughs> yeah you could win Today, if you, I'm sure there are guys that have collected them that, that will never sell them, but I think today they're valuing purely on the, the gold alone um, and obviously the, the limited kind of you know, number of them released. They, they're saying they're worth $36,000 each. You know, so it's crazy. There's, there's some of these things that, and, and South Africa is so mild. In the US, where I think the market is massive, mm. you've got these guys that are collecting stuff and they are happy to pay you know, literally hundreds of thousands of dollars for unreal the plastic, you know. So, yeah, I mean, there is that tipping point. Um, no, you can, you can become crazy. I mean, I, I think any any collector can, can eventually go mad. And here's another mm -hmm. good one. In the 80s, when obviously Star Wars or, or the late 70s, it was at its height being released. Yeah. They had one of these uh, mail-in action, you know, where you collect. We had it too. You collect the, the little stubs at the back of whatever you buy. You send yes. them in the mail, and then they send you a special figure in the post for free. Right. So they released this this uh, special edition of Boba Fett, the bounty hunter, which mm -hmm. you had to mail in, and and it had a special little spring loaded rocket on his backpack. Right. Which was deemed then to be dangerous. Okay, it could have yeah. shot through a kid's eye or whatever it was. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy today. They stopped it. They stopped making them immediately. So also yeah. there were probably only about. I think a handful, a thousand or so of them that went out. Today, if you have one of those in obviously mint condition, $150,000. Unreal. And you pay <laughs> zero. You mailed it in. All right. Box. All right. Well, now, I mean, if anybody who, who was thinking about collecting and hasn't decided to do this now, you can see how it becomes obsessive and it's so much fun. And you can actually, you can learn so much doing this too. All right, Rob, thanks so much. We'll talk to you. Okay, cool. Good luck. Cool. There he is. Yeah. This, uh, so we talk collector mania. I mean, this is just, you know, scratching the surface, but you can see there's a, there's a bit of an obsessive uh, gene in our family for this kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I think it's pretty so. cool.
Wow. That's Collectomania. It is brought to you by the South African Gold Coin Exchange and the Scoin Shop. And last week we had uh, the, the the two guys, Alan and Ryle, who who started this. <clears throat> and the two of them, um, they're a father and son combo. They run the Scoin Shop and the South African Gold Coin Exchange, and they have incredible collectibles there too. And those are things like the little gold C-3PO that my brother was just talking about now. Those are things that have intrinsic as well as collectability value. So, you know, you've got to you've got to decide on a collection that isn't going to deteriorate in value over time. <clears throat> you know, if you collected cabbage, I don't think that's the kind of thing. <laughs> that's, um, <laughs> a, cabbage is not a great thing to collect. Well, Just cabbage like, patch you know. kids could be. No. You remember those? Yeah, well, yes, cabbage patch kids probably, but not cabbage. Yeah. Not cabbage. Yeah, no, no. No, no. <laughs> Stay away from that. No, it's. Um, I think it's pretty cool. Um, we've we've got to we've got to get into everybody else's collections, and we will. I just thought because I know my brother is really into his collections, he'd be a, a good first guest for us. Yeah, um, absolutely. Now, you've been thinking about your collections, and you've you've got some things to add from last yeah, time. Yeah, now I I have to disappear because I have to collect two things. Oh, okay. show and tell, and come back. All right, it's show and tell time with Leanne Mole. She's gonna go and run off and get her stuff. Yeah, listen. I mean, I, I mentioned last week that I bought some some silver coins from the Scoin Shop and the South African Gold Coin Exchange. And if you look at the silver price, it's actually gone up quite nicely since I bought them. So I did a quick calculation, and I've probably made about twenty percent since I bought them. So you never That's know. Cool. Yeah, and I'm, <laughs> let me tell you what else I did over the weekend. I sold um, a whole lot because I, I I don't have huge uh, shares and and stocks, but I sold pretty much the majority of them and decided I'm I'm rather just going to buy a whole lot more Bitcoin. And I bought Bitcoin when it was at 48, 49,000. It's already back up to 52 today. So that's when your collections, even if it's something that you can't touch and feel like Bitcoin, you can't actually, you know, there's no physical thing that you're collecting. When it goes up in value, you're like, yes, I made the right decision. That was clever. I'm happy with that. I moved ahead. I'm doing well. And I mean, it could just as easily go down, but it's a fun thing to do. Yes, Leanne Moll, what have you got? Oh, hey. So interestingly enough, um, when I was a young teenager, um, we were in the Midlands. <laughs> Sorry, we were sorry. in the Midlands as a family, and um, my mom wanted to show me a specific factory which mm -hmm. is the Ardmore factory. So A-R-D-M-O-R-E. What's that? And okay. um, it's, a, it's a factory that started, or it was a small group of people that started. Um, I think it was uh, a woman and her husband who mm -hmm. started um, employing members of the community um, to make these little porcelain artworks. Yeah. But it grew and grew. And these amazing um, creations are now collector's items. Um, and they, they're, they're all sort of items that you would find around the home, but they're mm -hmm. made a lot more interesting. They're made to look a lot more interesting. Um, so, sure. for instance, this is one of them. Oh, so wow. this yeah. is a, a sugar bowl. Yep. And they're often made out of animals and weird creatures and beautifully painted. That's um, beautiful. So this is a, a sugar bowl from the Ardmore collection. Huh. Um, you can see this was made by Elizabeth, painted by goodness, um, at the Ardmore studio in 2003. It's probably That's coming amazing. up. Oh, there we go. So, so the race of the collection <clears throat> is actually at my, my mom's house. My mom has an amazing collection of Ardmore goodies. That's very cool. Just don't break it now after you've shown us. I know. Uh, as I was running yeah. towards yes. back to the laptop, oh, I thought, my gosh. And then um, just a silly little thing. In one of these old jewelry boxes that I've had since a child, it used to be with the ballerina, if you remember those. Yeah, <laughs> I remember those. Does your ballerina still work? No shame, she doesn't. You know, you you can overwind them, and I think I did that when I was little. Um, uh, sweet. But I've got some really interesting things in here, like 
Um, my gran was obsessed being being a devout Christian with going to Israel. And yeah. she brought me back every time she went, um, something tangible. Um, mm -hmm. For instance, this, this is a, a piece of cotton from one of the cotton fields in, in Israel. Sure. Um, that. She brought me um, a cluster of salt from uh, the Dead, Dead Sea. sea. That's yeah. cool. Um, and then you remember the story of David and Goliath. Yes, of course. Um, don't tell me you don't tell me you've got a um, one of of Goliath's fingers there or something. Oh, the slingshot! What was what was his? No, the actual no, rock that he, killed uh, Goliath. Yeah. yeah, well, there were five rocks that he picked up, and um, I have five rocks from the place where it took place. You're joking! I'm sure That's it, incredible. So yeah. one of those definitely killed him, right? Absolutely. Yeah, one of the, one of these could be the thing, you know. Yes. Um, yeah, you never know. For a case of murder. <laughs> well, I was just thinking, you know, this was decades ago, and I'm sure that that now you're not allowed to escape the country with these things. Um, I, I'm sure the rules are very different, but um, yeah. in those days you could, you know, you could take a shell or whatever you wanted. Um, so yeah, I've got. A whole little trinket of things here, which is quite cool. That's Obviously, very, it's, Le it's Leanne's show and tell, everybody. That, that was fun. Cool. That was very Obviously, cool. it's a collection yeah. I can't carry on building on, but the Ardmore is definitely something that is a passion. And that factory is still going, huh? Yes. Yes, okay. absolutely. Very nice. Well, I'm afraid we're going to have to wrap it up for this morning. We're already at 8 o'clock. It's been fun. It's been busy. It's been crazy. We've got lots of other stuff to talk about. And don't forget, next Monday, we will be looking at collections again. If you've got a cool collection and you want to tell us about it, please let us know, gareth at cliffcentral.com. And um, we would, we'd like to know what it is that you collect. It would be very, very interesting to hear what exactly is on the menu. And don't forget, we're not here tomorrow for the show live, but we will be back Wednesday morning at six o'clock. So from yep. Leanne and Sia and I, we will see you then. Have an excellent weekend. Well, uh, not a, a yes, public uh, holiday. Yeah. It's like, like a continuation of your weekend, I suppose. Yes. Get back to count, it. Yeah, count this as a, a little bit extra. All right, everybody. Thanks so much.